So I know my thumbnail is obviously taking the piss out of the end credit sequence of Pearl and like this doesn't happen in this film, but have you noticed that the end credits of Pearl look like this? It's good, 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 good. Hmm, sounds good. Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel. Today it's going to be a movie review for Maxine, written and directed by Ty West. This is the conclusion of the X trilogy. Back in 2022, we had X and Pearl. Even though Pearl was an origin story of the character of Pearl from X, it was still damn good nonetheless. It was one of those things at first I'm like, did we need an origin story? But it was great. I love X. I prefer X over Pearl. But it was one of those things where these films gave me the ick in the best way possible. That cinematic horror experience where you get the ick, it gives you the heebie-jeebies and it just makes you feel very uncomfortable. Obviously with X taking place in the 70s and then Pearl taking place during the First World War. They're like completely chalk and cheese, but the production value, everything in front and behind the camera, I loved. And I love the fact that when it came to Pearl, the look was so much more brighter than the dark and dingy look of X. Because to me, the events that were going on during Pearl are so grim, so depressing, but through Pearl's eyes, she sees the world as a colorful place, even though she's surrounded by not so colorful and great people. And now we have Maxine, which follows Maxine after the events of X. It's now set in 1985, but some pieces of her past come back to haunt her. She's also dealing with the Night Stalker, or as he's known by his real name, Richard Ramirez. So I love the inclusion of a real life serial killer. Very once upon a time in Hollywood, obviously with the inclusion of the Manson family, Helter Skelter, the Manson murders and all that jazz. Now this film has big shoes to fill. This is the climax of the trilogy, the X trilogy from Ty West. Did I enjoy this? Absolutely. Did it give me that gut punching feel at the end where I felt like Maxine had a triumphant end? Not so much, but hear me out. Going back to what I said about X and Pearl giving me the ick, Maxine didn't give me the ick. And at first, I wasn't okay with it. I walked out of the cinema, I'm like, that was, it kind of went out on a whimper. But then going back and doing some further reading this morning, Ty West made a very good point. Even though this is a trilogy and they're sort of cohesive, even though X jumps straight to Maxine and Pearl is the origin story, there's a quote from him. And it made me realize that this is still a great film regardless. So this is when the script was in early development in 2022. And West announced that he was working on a script for the third film in the X series. To be set chronologically after the events of X, the project will explore another sub-genre of horror and will continue the depiction of cinema's influence on society, exploring how the development of home video releases did so. West states, while a viewer can watch each movie in his trilogy individually without seeing the previous film, they're made to complement each other. So to me, Maxine is like the once upon a time in Hollywood, Tarantino, Lethal Weapon, Beverly Hills Cop installment in the trilogy. Again, didn't give me the ick, the violence is definitely there, but I just felt Maxine's triumphant ending wasn't as triumphant as I had thought it would be given the fact of how brutal, intense, and upsetting the ending of X was. Again, it just gave me the heebie-jeebies. And obviously, I expected that with Maxine. Pearl definitely gave me the heebie-jeebies, made me very uncomfortable. But again, I loved that. It shocked me to my core. And yes, it is a trilogy, but I think they have their own beautiful, unique identities to them. It just happens to have Mia Goth in all three of them. Speaking of, Mia Goth, she is an absolute powerhouse in this film. She was an absolute powerhouse in Pearl and X. Like, I love the fact that her and Ty West co-wrote Pearl together. She's just so invested in this world building that Ty West has started. The performances on a whole are just incredible. And then that goes for the whole trilogy in itself. You can always bank on everything looking great in camera, sounding great, the set design, everything. This is set in 1985 and I love a good 80s period piece. Everything looked brilliant. The, the color correction, the set dressing, the costumes. Kevin Bacon is an absolute hoot in this. The inclusion of the Night Stalker, going back to that, I loved. Unfortunately for me, it kind of didn't go anywhere. And yeah, it kind of does come full circle at the end with events from her past that took place in X. And I, I, I understood that and I could kind of see that coming and it was leading into the third act. In terms of the brutality and the violence, it's peppered throughout the film, not so much as Pearl and X. And I think that's why I was just banking on some absolute, as Cody Leach would say, carnage candy. There is one 
bit of gore in this film that made everyone squirm and cross their legs. And that's all I'll say. There was an abrupt bunch of screams and I think I was the one that was screaming the loudest. And literally for about a minute after I was doing the that little bit gave me the ick just there. So guys, in the end, initially, I had mixed feelings about Maxime, but upon thinking about it and kind of dissecting it and just letting it sit for a night, I really do appreciate this film on its own. Obviously, try not to compare it so much to X and Pearl, but you can't help but do that because X and Pearl were just so great. And if this is gonna be called the X Trilogy, you expect a bit of cohesion, but to me, this kind of stands on its own. Again, I see this as the once upon a time in Hollywood Tarantino grindhouse lethal weapon slash Beverly Hills cop version in this trilogy. And there's nothing wrong with that. Again, it just kind of has its own identity. I just felt also that Maxine's ending could have been a bit more triumphant because to me, it just kind of went out on a whim. But regardless of that, you've got some wonderful performances, beautiful costumes, set design, just everything, the attention to detail, everything has been taken care of so well. And that's something you can always bank on with these films. They always look great and sound great and the performances are absolutely brilliant. I have a feeling this film may divide people. Some people may love the ending and the ending that Maxine gets or some people may not be satisfied. It'd be interesting to see once all the reviews start coming out and people start seeing this film. But regardless of that, I just see this film kind of standing on its own. And with that, I'm gonna be giving Maxine four stilettos, very sharp stilettos out of five. So guys, once you've seen Maxine, drop a comment below and let me know your thoughts. What's your favorite out of the trilogy? For me, it's definitely X. I love the Friday the 13th Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibes. Just makes you feel really yucky and the, the, the setting in the 70s, just the look of the film as well. It just gives you this sense of dread. Then obviously Pearl, Maxine, again, they each have their own identities, I feel, even though I do group X and Pearl together because to me, they're the most horrific. And this is obviously Ty West's attempt at doing something different in this world that he's created. Nonetheless, it was still a damn good effort. Love you guts, and I'll catch you in the next one.